great screens. Obviously, they had a certain approach, and uh, we just try to be. Well, as the game went on, we got a little bit more patient, um, just seeing the pictures correctly, and and obviously you just got to make sure that. So, um, yeah, it was a nice flow. We moved the ball too early. They, sometimes it's moving it too much and too quick, but. For the most part, just trying to create great shots. So whether it's pick and roll or whether it's you know, our normal motion type offense, and um, it worked out for us tonight. Steph, uh, Ramona Shelburne with ESPN. What's it like for you guys when you're in that flow, when you guys are moving the ball and sharing the ball like you, like you were the last couple of games? I mean, it's fun. It's, it's when we're at our best in terms of everybody feeling like they're a threat on the floor. Um, I mean, honestly, even when Kay's out there, he's our safety valve in terms of we can end the possession that way, but we try to get to those looks and those patterns, um, you know, as much as we can. It just puts so much pressure on the defense. You know, you can't key in on one guy, and even if you try to, somebody else is going to be open. And, um, you see, like, the morale, like, everybody's shoulders are up and, you know, the smiles and just aggressiveness all over the floor. Whether it's set a screen or you know swing swing or you know cutting hard all that type of stuff. So um, when you create good shots that way. It's fun for everybody. And up left hand side here. Yeah. Hi, Steph. Uh, Ryan Leong with uh, Associated Press Radio. Um, how much do you think this game? Not not that it's going to be a trap for game two, but how much do you guys have to be cautious of how much Portland may be able to adapt and come out stronger in game two? I mean, it's like that every series when you win. You know, the first game at home. So what you're supposed to do. We obviously play well tonight. We want to carry them, carry that momentum over to game two. But um, you know, we've been in the situation plenty of times, and uh, more so than that, I've handled our business in game two. Obviously, against the Clippers, we didn't uh, had to had to really work. Uh, even against Houston, we went two, up 2-0, and then the narrative is, can you win on the road? So it's it's just game at a time, man. Um, haven't been through so many of these series. We understand what the drill is, and they're going to make adjustments and uh, probably play really aggressive and assertive in the first half game, too. we got to be ready for that punch and, and uh, to keep playing hard. Standing up, left-hand side. On the athletic step, obviously, in the last round, kind of knocked down the bench a little bit uh, in, in a much tighter rotation until game six. Game six, played 11 guys. Tonight, obviously, played a ton of guys. Played some different kind, of different combinations. Does that feel more like yourselves? Do you understand what happens in the playoffs? What's the feeling when so many different guys, a, a Jarebko, a, a Quinn Cook, get major rotation minutes? I mean, honestly, that's the beauty of the playoffs. Every series is different, um, and when you have the capability to, you know, expand the bench and, and fill minutes with guys that uh, are obviously capable, can help us on the floor on both ends. Um, and you see like the confidence that they play with, you know, regardless of what the situation is, that that's contagious for sure. So the Houston series was interesting. It took a certain, you know, style and dynamic the first five games. Game six, we obviously had to with K going out, you know, fill those 40 minutes with, uh, you know, a multitude of guys. Uh, but we talk about it a lot in terms of how prepared they, you know, <coughs> Quinn, uh, Zoe, uh, JB, uh, even Jonas as well, like they all work with the work in and they're not afraid of the moment. So when they're out there, they, they you know, they try to make plays and, and take shots they're supposed to take and uh, it gives us a huge boost and tonight was, you know, right up that, uh, right up that street for sure. Anthony Slater with the athletic staff, were you uh, just surprised how they, they guarded you with their bigs tonight? I mean, we've played against Canada before, and, and there's certain looks that you, you can get, but when it comes to just seeing the pictures, whether it's coming off and shooting every time or you know, giving it up and relocating or trying to get our motion offense going, you know, and whatever the situation is, as long as we're just being patient, um, it, it's, it's, it's key for us. So first, Ten minutes, really, a little maybe even into the second quarter, we were just moving a little too fast. Obviously, we made a couple shots that kept us uh, afloat, but we were, we settled down and, and things really started to open up when we when 
we knew what we were trying to go after. Third row, right hand side. Stephen <coughs> Trudell, ESPN. Obviously, you got rolling in the second half in Game Six in Houston. How much <coughs> do you think was a, a carryover into the night? Uh, it helped. I mean, he just uh, again. I know what I'm capable of on the floor, and the situation calls for me to be a little bit more aggressive. And I hope that will continue. So uh, obviously, it's nice to see the ball going. I didn't shoot the ball well for four and a half quarters and uh, four and a half games, let's say, in the last series, and got off to a good start tonight. So want to want to maintain that. Every game is different. You got to re-establish yourself, um, and that's my perspective. No matter you know, how how I play. Standing up here, left hand side. Steph Match Nyman, Bay Area News Group. You guys have ruled Damian Jones out, and then he comes in and gives you guys some feel good minutes. Draymond said he could see him playing more because he gives you guys a lob threat that he doesn't think you have. How'd you feel seeing him get on the court after everything he's been through? And could you see him maybe playing a, a little bit of a role here this series? Uh, anything's possible with us in terms of who, who's out there on the floor. For sure, but for him, uh, knowing that coming into this year, he was kind of slated in that starting spot until DeMarcus got back, and um, he was learning on the job and playing well and, and gaining that confidence and experience. And obviously, unfortunate injury that took the rest of the season away up until you know, tonight. And, uh, he's been grinding. Um, for like the last three or four weeks, you've been just seeing him you know, get confidence out there, all the drills he's been doing. And it was a nice surprise to see him, you know, get a couple minutes and great for him. So who knows what will happen uh, down the stretch, but he's obviously capable um, in the offense that we play and, and uh, the experience that he gained in those first you know, two months. Third row middle, C.J. Peterson, San Francisco Examiner. Steph, you mentioned Kevon's ability to set screens. What do you think of his ability to run the break tonight? Off of one of his three steals, ended up uh, with a dunk from him, I believe. I mean, he's a pretty uh, sneaky athletic in terms of open floor and the speed and, and whatnot. So uh, he, he's versatile too. He can do a lot of different things. He can sacrifice his body on screens and block shots, rebound really extremely well. Um, and then when the pace starts to keep up or pick up, he, he can keep up for sure. So. Um, just love the energy that he plays with, and when he knows he's going to be a huge part of what we do, um, he usually shows up. Two more, front row center. Uh, Julianne Herrera, ABC7 News. Can you talk about how fun it was to be on the court with your brother today in the Western Conference Finals? I saw him trying to get back on defense once when you had the ball, and just must, it's really special. You're the only brothers to ever do this. Yeah, um, we've been talking about it for the last couple of days about how special you know it is obviously we played plenty of games now uh, on the same court and you, you understand what that vibe is like but on this stage uh, trying to chase the finals appearance is it's pretty pretty surreal um, I think I caught myself a couple of times looking up the stands and my parents uh, who did the whole coin flip thing and they can't hold themselves, so anytime either one of us did something good, they both were clapping. So they gotta, they gotta fix themselves. Cause I told my mom, like, who you, who you with? Um, when I made a shot, I saw her stand up and cheer, but I saw all Portland. Um, yeah, it was just, it's just weird. So it, it's probably more nerve wracking for them um, in terms of just trying to get settled into what this series is gonna mean. Final one. Steph, uh, Tony Harvey, Sacramento, I'm sure I think we did see both <coughs> parents cheer for both of you, but uh, being out there on that court in that situation with Seth, did it kind of like bring back memories of, you know, playing in the driveway again, you know, going in at one-on-one -on -one with your brother? It always, yeah, it always takes you back there for sure. Um, from the time I can remember in the backyard playing, playing with each other one year in high school, I watch a lot of his games too, so I get a nice, you know, built-in scout report. You know, just watching him, locking eyes on, on what he does. So I think, but we obviously know our, each other's games extremely well, and um, a different light goes off when when uh, you see your brother across from you. So again, we're going to enjoy this experience, um, and it'll be something to remember no matter how how it ends up for sure.
Great, thank you for us tomorrow. Uh, Warriors availability at 1145 at our practice facility.